Hey, we're Toucher and Rich, and uh, we've uh, long uh, discussed uh, the uh, post-baseball career of Kurt Schilling, a man who is a walking calamity, a real calamity, like a real dumb guy, like a really dumb person. Um. That dangerous dumb, that dumb that thinks that they're smarter than everyone else, which is, uh, there's a term for, which I'm not smart enough to remember. But see how I'm differentiating myself from him? Mm -hmm. I'm admitting my own mental uh, incapabilities. And uh, he's got a podcast on uh, the. Is it on Outkick? Because there was a sign uh, yes. behind him that says Outkick. Uh, Fred, yes. all I know is that there was a moment during the show yesterday morning where. I was made aware of what Kurt Schilling said on his podcast, and um, I, 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 he essentially went on and said that Tim Wakefield was, I think he said he had brain cancer. I have the clip here. I don't want to play it. I, I, I actually don't want to. I, a matter of fact, I hardly even want to mention this guy's name, but you have to to add context. Well, it's in so, the paper. I mean, you I, can play no, no, the no, clip. I, no, no, I'm not talking about Tim Wakefield. I'm talking about Kurt Schilling. No, I know, but, I mean, it's all, it's in the globe it's national yeah. news so i mean so, so the, during, the point well, is is that well, Schilling is the one who broke well it. let me tell you this though you Fred, can play the audio he sounds like an a-hole during the show yesterday this came out and he threw it out there that you know what i'll just play it Here, here's what here's a little bit of what kurt Schilling had to say on his podcast tim wakefield uh, you know you remember tim wakefield the uh, the knuckleballer um is uh sick and uh, I talked with Doug Mirabelli yesterday, and this is not a message that Tim has asked anyone to share, and I don't even know if he wants it shared. But uh, as a Christian and a, as a man of faith, I've seen prayer work, and so I'm going to talk about it. Um, Tim's wife, Stacy, who's one of the sweetest women you'll ever meet, is uh, uh, very sick with pancreatic cancer. Um, and my wife has talked with her, and they're communicating, and, and they're going through an incredibly difficult time with Stacy, um, and I wanted them to know that we're obviously all thinking about them and praying for her, but recently Tim was diagnosed with a very serious, very aggressive form of brain cancer. Okay, so yesterday when that came out, I started Googling, I'm like, hang on, did Tim Wakefield let everybody know that he's sick? Is this just something that we're hearing, uh, you know, that he's, this is news that's already out there, and I went looking around, and there was none of it, and it became abundantly clear that Kurt Schilling had for the first time, and he admitted right there that Tim Wakefield didn't want people to know, had blown up his spot. Someone who is obviously, we don't know whether it's cancer or not, had absolutely betrayed any kind of trust that it's just as bad as it gets. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to that, and, and John and I were talking, and I for a moment was about to go on the air and just go crazy on Kurt Schilling. But then I thought to myself, well, then... To be quite honest, if if the Wakefields didn't want anyone to know about it, I'm not going to talk about it. I don't want to do it. So, first of all, screw a lot of the blogs, that the Red Sox blogs, that took that audio and put it out there, too. I don't even know if anyone would have known about it because who the hell listens to Kurt Schilling's stupid podcast? So it gets well, out that's there. that's the thing is it gets, that happens a lot. It got, it got picked up by a bunch of people, and I'm like, Jesus, w stop. The, the, the Wakefields don't want anyone to know about this. And you're like, oh, t thoughts and prayers to the Wakefields. No, you're making it worse. So I looked at John, and I was just like, well, I'm not going to talk about it because this is something that – it's no, it wasn't they want to something. Keep private. No, it's not something that we would have talked about. And then, the Red Sox made a statement, and their statement said, "The Red Sox today issued the following statement: Permission with uh, Tim and Stacy Wakefield. Quote: We are aware of the statements and inquiries about the health of Tim and Stacy Wakefield. Unfortunately, this information has been shared publicly without their permission. Their health is a deeply personal matter. They intended to keep private as they navigate treatment and work to tackle the disease." Tim and Stacy are appreciative of the support and the love that has always been extended to them and respectfully ask for their privacy at this time. That is awful. That is the Red Sox, obviously, hearing from Tim Wakefield and his family. They are obviously crushed by this all, and the Red Sox put out that statement. And uh, listen, this is just, just from being kind of gone a little bit through what they were going through with my wife. I'll just mention this. When you're fighting, like when my wife did, like a deadly disease, every day you are the finest hair away from an emotional breakdown. 
It takes everything inside of you just to get up, function, go about your day, and not collapse instantly into, like, this emotional meltdown. It almost feels like you're trying to smile and, and be a normal human being while walking around with a gun to your head that could go off at any minute. You look for anything that just makes you smile, gives you hope, or, or, or your awareness of humanity is, is magnified, and unfortunately, so is the selfishness. There's a lot of reasons why people opt not to tell anyone they're battling with a disease. John, you had mentioned that you have known, you knew somebody that, yeah. that and, and, and their reasoning was that they didn't want people to look at them differently. Yep. Um, when someone finds out that you're sick, you hear from everyone, and I mean everyone, and, 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 it's, and it's all really well intended. But there is a guilt that you start to feel that you're not getting back to everyone, and as good as I'm sure most people's intentions are, it becomes a ton of work to deal with, and you're already giving everything you can physically and emotionally uh, to, to fight to stay alive. And then, as you said, there were the people who don't want to look, be looked at differently yeah. or they don't want to burden others with the pain that they're going through. Yeah. Norm MacDonald, I give you Both that. Those, yeah. I immediately think of him. I think of um, Paul Rubens just recently, Chadwick Boseman. Mm. How long did Chadwick Boseman, was he, was he fighting cancer and, and, and didn't want anyone to know about it? And when they, they passed away, nobody had any idea. But the power of prayer, it was... Well, well, uh, well listen, it. to take away that one thing... But he was doing and to it make for the these right people's reason. lives any tougher than how unimaginably tough it already is in college. And I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm sick of people hiding behind God to justify well, awful it's behavior. It's a Jesus Christ pose. I, I mean, it's a, he, he really believes, like, I'm... And he says it, if you keep playing the audio, he says, like, you know, a lot of people aren't brave enough, and it's their own self-interest not to mention something like this. Like, he's, he's again, labeling himself as a hero and uh, in, in the conduit of God and that... Uh, and that you know, like, who do you if she gets, you are? Oh, he, he's a, a, a conduit to, and, and, uh, to God. And Fred, just coming from a place where I saw this a lot, I'm just tired of people hiding behind God to justify their awful behavior. When it comes to a person's character, you should always judge people by their actions, not their words. Well, but and also, it's none of his business. What you don't know what Wakefield wants. Like what you saw the power of prayer. Well, what, what if Wakefield doesn't want that? Do you know the unneeded stress you put on them yesterday? Well, yes, they had to the get they, they, they get a PR team together to put out a statement. Yes, they was it was all unnecessary and all needed, and it was a selfish act by uh, by uh, Schilling. It was it was I would believe to get ears on yes. his podcast. He's always been that way. Yeah, and he, in in his in his own stupid brain, he like can justify anything. He can justify anything. He justifies everything he does. Every stupid thing he does, he justifies it. It's the most infuriating of human beings. Someone that that can never be wrong, that thinks they're a genius. He's a, he's an ill person. It appears to me. I just think betraying someone's trust when they're at their most vulnerable could be one of the most unchristian things you can do. Well, I don't, I don't know enough about Christianity, anyway, but just, I'm just I'm, telling I'm just saying, you that if you if you if but if but, that's but your he's standard. playing God is 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 playing God is what he's doing is he's telling him well I know better than the family. I don't know if the family wants you to know this, but they wouldn't know about the power of prayer. And by me telling my uh, dozens of listeners about this and then you all pray, I mean, the chances of them getting better are much better. Is what he's saying is exactly what he's saying, that I, I am a yeah. hero here. I am orchestrating a, yeah. a massive prayer vigil that I have seen with my own eyes. They're not, work. Do they're not doing enough. They're not doing yeah, enough. Yeah, they're not doing right. enough because yeah. it's my responsibility to get my dopey audience to pray, and then that will make all the difference in the world. And you'll see and if uh, if if they can get better, then it's all thanks to me and the fact that I got my dopey the, audience to pray. But there me. are but there are masses of idiots who will listen to someone say something truly awful and hateful, and then they'll say God. And they'll go, oh, okay, well, fine. Or something truly awful and hateful, and they'll put up a flag. Oh, okay, great. And I'm sick of it. And this guy, out of all the people, it's it's just, I I, I, I heard that yesterday, and it wasn't, and I, I didn't want to even mention the guy. But the one thing I just wanted at least out there is for him to know and for anybody who would possibly even ever consider blowing up someone's spot who's going through like that before, just to kind of have have some sort of inside look as to what life is like when you are fighting. And it's hell. And every day is an emotional roller coaster. And for someone to do that 
and to take away the one thing that was probably keeping them from breaking down, their privacy, is unconscionable. I saw Jeff Perlman yesterday, who is a, uh, a, a good writer, and he wrote, I covered some true a-holes in my career. John Rocker, Will Clark, Barry Bonds, Albert Bell, guys that were mean oh, for Clark's sport. He said, but Kurt Schilling was truly the most hated amongst his fellow ball players. Truly never met someone who liked him, which is a trick. So I don't know. I, I just, I want this to be less about Kurt and more about just stop justifying being awful. Well, he's the one who said it. So it's... It, it is about him. He's the one who did it. It's his responsibility. And we've known for a while. I mean, the, the, the everyone knows he's an idiot. But now, hopefully, well, everyone knows people will stop listening. To Any, anyone who didn't think he's an idiot is not going to change their mind. That's the, the, the very small portions. And but, by the way, obviously, it, it, it goes without saying, you know, with, 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 thoughts towards the, the Wakefield family. That's sure. got to be tough. I mean, I, I can't even imagine mm-hmm. the last 24 hours for them. Well, Catherine Veritek was fairly, fu- fairly funny yes. yesterday. She, she said, said it all. She, she might have been the one that actually blew the whole she, thing she up. She said, F you. She said, <laughs> I don't like you. That's yeah, right. Yeah. She said, how dare you? She said, go F yourself. But, uh, yeah. I mean, but you are right. The people that covered the what he said immediately when he said it. I, it that's, is, that's, is, is everyone's like, got to be first. Well, that's you don't like think about you, the repercussions. That's like when someone goes like, oh, my God, did you hear what the racist thing the guy said, like, in his front lawn or something? And then you go, well, no, obviously, I don't live in his front lawn. And then they go, well, can you imagine if people who would, this would really offend the people of the race that he insulted, so let's play it for them. <laughs> like, you know, like there always is that little tidbit of like, well, if you didn't cover it, n- no one would have been offended by it because you wouldn't have, no one would have known. So let's, what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get business to what you're doing and attention onto yourself. By sharing this information, you're protecting nobody. You're, in fact, making things way worse. You're hurting everyone involved in the situation. Uh, so there is always that aspect of everything, in much lighter cases than this, too. Like, I don't think Morgan Wallen, you know, s- saying a, a racial slur in his front yard was going to get to the ears of many African Americans until, you know, it went on the news. <laughs> like, if you were that concerned about people not hearing the word, the best thing to do would be dispose of not, the ring tape. Not play it. But yes. Lord knows it ruined the man's career. So, I mean, yeah. here he is. I mean, I mean, he's really suffered for it. I thought that statement was fantastic by the Red Sox, though. I thought it was great. Yeah, because they hate. They just want shilling away from them. I don't know why he won't leave Massachusetts. If there was somebody, some way that Schilling was still hanging on to his ex-Red Sox roots, he, it's, that statement officially excommunicates him. No, it's no. Fantastic. You can't have him around. I mean, he's a real moron i mean he he i mean there's people that have wild like political ideals and stuff like that that you that still you know like i mean they're people's parents and grandparents and bosses and i mean there's yeah. there's a way to to, to navigate life having different uh, opinions on things and people it's an entirely other thing to be out of your mind and he's out of his mind he's out of his mind he can't get out of his own way he's a, a, a hateful awful a uh, really dumb person, and whatever the term for dumb people that think they're super smart. Uh, self. There's a, uh, it's there's not a term. self. There's, there's like a, a there's a, but it's like one word. Yeah, it is. I don't know. I used. To- I don't know. We've, we every time we bring up shilling, a bunch of our audience tells us what the word is, <laughs> and then and then I go, oh, that's the word, and then I can never remember it when it comes time because he's the only guy I can really think of that I'm like truly like. Hi, my God. I mean, you remember, and we got a break, but you remember, I mean, we'll just go back to it because it's sort of funny, is that when, like, there was all the the hurricanes and everything in Houston, and TJ, and not TJ Watt, uh, uh, Watt, JJ Watt, 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 had this, like, thing with the, like, the Red Cross, and he was, like, you know, pumping out, like, millions of was, pounds of food and water, and yeah. it was, like, all cooking, and, like, Kurt got wind of that and was, like, yeah. I'm renting I'm, a trailer I'm, and I'm driving. I'm, I'm going from I'm going from Boston, baby. <laughs> driving right into that thing. This is the best. And, and there's no way narcissist. No, narcissist. No, no, no. It's beyond narcissist. It's it's okay. uh, it's it's not, the narcissist is what I'm thinking of. Like, I'm a narcissist kind of. I can think of it. <laughs> no, uh, but the uh, the um, but but then he was like, because you know he knew that wasn't the good way to do things. Like to, to well, then he ended up abandoning. Well, the no, trailer. yeah, but, but you knew he knew that that <laughs> the the, the, mo- the best way to get stuff to people that needed it wasn't his stupid ass 
getting trucks and driving them down to Texas into the hurricane. Bunch of bunch of people are tweeting, you know, the, the word patronizing, pseudo intellectual, no, no, pretentious. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. Our it's, audience is really letting us down. I know, I know yeah. the word, and that's not. Yeah, it. there's some word for it. All right, very good. Well, there you go. 